Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are back, finally, working on Dad's Daily. Uh, Dad is due back in uh, probably a week or two, and we need to get our butts moving on this car because he is ready to drive it. He's been hitting me up, texting me once every couple weeks saying, hey, what's going on with that car? Can I drive that thing this summer? So we need to get back on it. So uh, one of the big things we needed to take care of was the gauges. We've already got like pretty much all the wiring uh, laid out in the car and done. The last thing we need to do as far as wiring goes, essentially, is just the uh, the gauges. So naturally, I went for Stuart Warner gauges. You know, on a lot of the other cars that we're doing that are more period perfect, we are using true vintage 40s, 50s Stuart Warner gauges. Very expensive to get them restored and put back in the car. This car, we have a little more freedom because it's more of a street rod. We can we can opt for some classic looking uh, modern Stuart Warner gauges. So we chose the Stuart Warner Deluxe line of gauges. They are pretty much the standard. You know, they looked very similar for so many years. Uh, they will look right in the car, but um, is a lot easier to hook up. We don't have to go through 10 sets of gauges to get one good set. So we have to do a little bit of modification to the dash on a 46 to 48, which we're going to show you. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, we will get a complete set of beautiful Stuart Warner gauges in this car and be one step closer to having dad's daily ready for the road. So let's get started. All right, so Steve's in the car. We got the steering wheel off. You can see this is the pattern that they give you with this gauge kit, which is pretty nice. Um, the, the company we bought it from. I think most of them include this, but this is a little template that you lay over top so you can see our problem here. These are those factory holes, little square holes. Um, Steve's already kind of drawn some lines on here and some marks, but if you want to just put that over. So basically what you do is you lay that template over top of the dash there. Um, what, what did you find when you you put this on, it was running into the plastic? Yeah, you, you have to kind of move it around the plastic or modify the plastic, whichever you'd rather do. We just, cho choosing to not modify the plastic, just move the gauges over a little bit. Yeah, so we didn't want to, in case we decide to change to like chrome, they sell like chrome trim and different types of that uh, dash trim, we don't want to have to modify every single one. So uh, we're going to move, Steve moved this over just a little bit. So what we're going to do is just cut out the opening where the gauges would be instead of just hole sawing it, we're gonna cut the whole opening out, but it'll leave the areas where the bolt or the studs go through. So it still will be fine, but uh, the way they had it originally with the size you'd have to cut the plastic trim um, over here, where this fits up, it was kind of like against on the corner here or under it, and we would have to cut the trim to get it to fit. So just moving it over ever so slightly will solve that problem. So we're gonna work on getting the line's laid out, the hole's drilled for the studs, and then we can uh, take a uh, surgical tool and open that up and we can fit that first piece of trim in. Turning back. Nope. Holes are drilled. It's going Virgin in. Virgin car, you're messing up. <laughs> this car has been a long time since this car was a virgin. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> that Chevy rear didn't come original? I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think that bright yellow paint underneath everything else did either. <laughs> Man, I got duped on this one. Pretty nice. I mean, yeah, not... I think with the gauge, with the gauge panel, mm -hmm. you cut this part out, and then the curve it'll sit in. Ah, yeah, that's why it's kind of hidden. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, well, yeah, we can yeah. we can open those holes just a little bit once we get the. Mm-hmm. Right. I'd actually rather it be tight right now so that the we get a true yeah mark. Yep.
just till you get that top Sand it up and match. Mm -hmm. it it's it's like it's like just about sitting in it. Almost, yeah. It's close. The bottom needs a little off, it looks like. Right in on yep. this side, right? Yep. Up against. That was all it needed. Nice. Things tight up against, and it's it's fitting nice and mm -hmm. snug in that opening, so Excellent. nothing's gonna walk or move on us. That looks good. Yeah, it does. I think that's the ticket right there. Yep. Cool. So this trim takes just a bunch of little, uh, like I guess self-tapper yeah, type screws. Sheet, little sheet metal screws. Yep. Anything that like under a, under a half an inch. <laughs> Yeah, very thin or uh, short ones, so they yeah. don't puncture through. But the that's how uh, uh, hold in. Yeah, the nine sixteenths ones were too long. Okay. Half inch would probably be a little too close. These are perfect. Yeah, okay. Half inches. Nice. So and then we got that piece of trim you already the reducer you already put in that one. Yeah. And then that piece should just fit right in and look awesome. Yep. Look at that. There we go. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Tucks right in I'm there. I'm digging yeah. that. It looks. I like how the lines are machined in this, so yeah. it doesn't look as billet mm -hmm. billety. <laughs> yep. That's we cool. could always paint it black. A little, little rust encapsulator. <laughs> nah, we'll It'll leave disappear. It. We'll leave it alone <laughs> for now. I like it. All right, so let's get a Speedo and slide yeah. it in there and see how it works. Yeah. And that just there pops in there like that. Not that Dad's gonna probably be driving much at night because he's <laughs> he's old. <laughs> oh baby, look at that! That's the ticket right there. Hey guys, this Sunday, May first, we have a live Sunday service. I know last Sunday was the end of the month, but we're moving it to this Sunday. Uh, we had a bunch of stuff going on after Carlisle and didn't have a chance to do it. Um, so Matt and I will be going live from the shop, giving some shop updates talking about everything Iron Trap, uh, some stuff we have going on in the future for events, that kind of stuff. So be sure to join us 10 a.m. sharp. We go in live to answer all your questions. Thanks, guys. See you then. So pretty much since the beginning of time, Stuart Warner has put a little uh, raised um, bump here for locating the gauges. Uh, this has been, I mean, I, I have gauges from the 40s and 50s that they're just like this. Same thing, but this is an aftermarket panel uh, that was, you know, cut by a machine shop or whatever. And this particular one, they do not cut notches for store Warner gauges. Some of the aftermarket brands may not have this. Store Warners do. So you have a couple options. You could potentially knock this down, but I kind of like having the notch. So what you can do is file or grind or whatever putting the little recess in there. It's not raised very much, but it's just enough that if you don't do that, the gauge does not sit all the way in. 
and you're not going to get a full um, seat on it. So what we're going to do is file that in there and then we can uh, get these located and keep moving forward. Just clipped in. Nice. <laughs> to my notch. There you go. Yep, that's good. That's all it took is just a little tiny bit with the file. You got your, uh, if you want to grab the retainers, we'll just put them in one by one and work our way across. That looks good. Press it in a little. Puts a little scratch in the aluminum. trim down. Yep. Cool. Alright, so we got our gauge here. Let's see. Looking pretty awesome. So we got those gauges all mounted up. Nice thing with this panel is you can just throw the gauges in ahead of time and then slide the whole mess in. Um, so our uh, beautiful hand model here yeah, will we'll put this in. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Man, that looks cool. It just fits the air, like the style of the car, mm -hmm. I think, with the small walk forward and the, yep. you know, Yeah, it does. It's like a 70s street rod. Cool. We'll get this gauge panel mounted, mounted and then we're going to take the other piece of trim, show you guys how you mount up the uh, tack in that off the car, and then we'll get that mounted and put some of the fixings on we're doing pretty good all right so the last uh, piece we have to put in is this retainer it kind of goes or a uh, trim that goes over the uh, glove box and this is the little retainer piece so we figured we'd show you outside the car how it goes in it's super simple so you put the little piece in here and then there's these little tabs that are press brake put on the press brake to make the little studs in and you could make these adapters you know if you have the ability with a mill or a lathe you could easily put these make these yourself Okay. Now, if you're worried about things such as correct orientation, you're going to want to put it in this way. <laughs> uh, if you're not sitting upside down in the car, I think you want it that way. Yeah. You ever seen me drive? Mm -hmm. not, out of the, not out of the realm of uh, possibility. <laughs> Nice meat though, that model made me. 
Yeah, I always enjoyed it. I stayed for quite a while. Yeah. Well, I I was going to leave, and then uh, that one, I think his name is Tom. Oh, he's a, he's ninety or more. Okay. Had a lot of head, big old headlights there on his table. Mm -hmm. So. All right, all right. So we got the gauges in. Uh, Steve's been working on making a bracket because we wanted to take this factory radio delete panel that, that Carl had in the car when we got it. And a, a viewer made this really cool, like 3D metal printed, 3D printed out of metal, which is, still blows my mind, uh, badge that says Dad's Daily, uh, matches the font of uh, that they used on these early Fords of this era. So um, Steve made up a bracket that just bolts in here. So we're gonna put that on. It's kind of the final touch for this video that it's been, um, it's been kind of fun putting the dash back together. We still need a couple of little pieces in there, um, but that was, this will be a nice little finishing touch. I can't wait to show dad uh, that little thing in there, which is pretty cool. Let's get that threaded in, and then uh, we'll show you guys what it all looks like. All right, so uh, we got that last, uh, kind of final touch for this video in the car. So we were able to get all the gauges in the car, the trim, um, and of course the uh, the filler panel with the Dad's Daily. I've been di dying to do that since we got that in a mail call. It's super cool and it is a nice little touch in the car. Now, uh, this obviously isn't finished. We need to get some other parts. Part of this whole process of working on this car, we got the whole entire car essentially in boxes um, when we got it from our friend Carl. And uh, he couldn't remember what was in the car, what was with the car. He thought everything was there, but over the years, things did get lost. So, for instance, we're putting together, we noticed we're missing the uh, left side ashtray. We're missing the garnish molding trim that goes around the windshield here. So there are a handful of things that we now found we need. But we wanted to get the gauges and the modifications done to the dash so we can get this all in. Now Steve could start working on the wiring to get all the gauges wired up, uh, especially the important stuff like the water temp, oil pressure, uh, voltage gauge and everything like that so that at least if my dad starts driving it you can keep an eye on the engine and make sure that we don't melt the engine down or lose oil pressure or anything like that so we're very happy to have all that stuff done um, we can keep working in the background getting the parts that are missing get the wiring done and some adjustments made we got to get this four pan section bolted back into the car but this is a huge step on this and it's kind of neat to put some new parts on this car it went very very smoothly and i think it looks really really good with the car they are street rod parts but they kind of look nostalgic and i think it all flows with the with the aluminum polished aluminum parts that we added um, it flows with all the original chrome and, and uh, stainless parts that were in the car before so um, that is a big update on dad's daily uh, we're hopefully here soon get dad to drive this thing and get his reaction. I can't wait, he's due back at the beginning of May, so we are pushing to try and get everything together so at least he can take a test drive around the block or take it on a little trip, he and I, somewhere to grab some lunch. So thank you guys for following along, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the new Store Warner gauges and the dash arrangement in Dad's Daily. Thanks guys, catch you later.